Madness this year. Pretty much every time that I would choose someone that I believe was going to win a championship, it completely backfired and uh, went the other direction. So, um, just not been my year. Um, this is the first time ever in my life it's not been my year. I'm, I'm really uh, shocked by by this. This is this is not somewhere that I normally am, and I it hurts. I have never felt this kind of loss and embarrassment before, and it is very painful. I just have to be really honest with most of you. I am, uh, I'm pissed. And it should really scare most of the people in my youth football league about how this year went, because I am going to rain down a fiery fury that has not been seen in this country since the likes of Andrew Jackson, Teddy Roosevelt, and Herschel Walker. I am going to bring the thunder into the league. It's going to look ugly. There are going to be, it's going to be a rough year for several people. Because I'll tell you what, I'm just, I've been embarrassed. I have been embarrassed. I picked Texas Tech yesterday. They go out and lose to stupid Virginia, who doesn't even deserve to be in the game. I, I will say this, that is one of the greatest turnarounds redemption stories in the history of basketball and college basketball and all that stuff. However, it's also extremely embarrassing because the year before this, you lost to a 16 seed and then you turn around and win the championship. Listen, I have never really been one for redemption stories. Like, I'm not one of those people who's like, ya, ya, underdog, go and get it. Like, I believe destruction and by any means necessary. That does not mean that you pay referees because let's be honest, Virginia had a lot of help getting to the national championship. Number one, Tennessee gets screwed in the game against Purdue. That dude kicks out his leg at the end to get fouled. I don't understand how you don't call that, I, just honestly. So then, they're not going to have to play Tennessee. They get Purdue instead. Well, then, they beat Purdue off of a last-second foul situation that should not have happened in overtime yet again. Then, they beat Auburn off of one of the worst missed double dribbles we've ever seen. I mean, it's pretty apparent he touches the ball with two hands. I, so the refs helped them there. I mean, clearly the SEC deep state showed up and reared its ugly head very strongly. That being said, it is a nice story. It's a nice, you know, it makes sense for ESPN, which makes sense. You know, they're, they're all anti-SEC over there. Even on the SEC Network, they're anti-SEC. So to me, my number one team this year, probably going to say it's Auburn. They should have been in the championship. It should not have been Virginia. It should have been Auburn. And they probably would have won the national championship because Texas Tech's defense is real good, but they probably can't score with Auburn. It's an impressive, uh, impressive road, though, for Texas Tech. That was a good year for them. I mean, making it to the national championship for them is just impressive. So if I'm Texas Tech, I've got to be pretty proud of... Uh, what they were able to achieve. You got to be be proud of your players, if your coaches and everything like that. Chris Beard did a great job. That defense is donchy. UCLA, uh, you know, other news, UCLA hires uh, Cronin from Cincy. I mean, Cincinnati had a good year. They had, you know, they've they've got the right kind of attitude. You know, a couple years back, I've, I talked about how they had a big fight. Um, Cincinnati players walk tall and and kind of, you know, play with that attitude on their shoulder. But I don't know that that's going to really fly out at UCLA because I just spent a lot of time out in Southern California, and i got to be honest with you. I did not find a lot of people with attitude outside of, uh, outside of Compton and Crenshaw, and that is not where UCLA is located. It is absolutely in the suburbs and in the ritzy parts of town, so I'm not sure those people are going to really appreciate that kind of... Uh, coach and attitude, especially when they could have gotten Rick Barnes. Um, 
who got his team to the Sweet 16, is building a program that is nowhere near as illustrious into a much more dominant team, into a much more impressive team. I mean, I understand why UCLA was after him, and I understand why they were going to offer him all that money. And they miss on that and help him actually get paid. I should probably try that. Maybe, you know, like, you know, offering my services to some other kind of league, see if my little league. That's a, that's actually a great idea. I should talk to uh, to Newbert and Marlin and, and some of my other coaches about that and see if we could get a, uh, you know, if we all banded together and said, hey, we're going to go and coach in Snoop Dogg's league because they're willing to pay us more money then this little league, league, you know, then they're willing to offer us. Would you all be able to pay me more? You know, try to renegotiate a contract here and there and see if I can get a little bit more money. Also, the Braves, uh, we're having a pretty good season so far. You know, it started off a little rough when we were up in Philly. Um, didn't love going up against Bryce Harper, even though he did not succeed very well. But, uh, the Phillies have really put together an interesting team. You know, I don't know where the city of Philadelphia came from, but they suddenly have put together, you know, the Eagles being real good and the 76ers being pretty good. And uh, especially, you know, now that the Phillies are good, that city's looking really enticing. I would be remiss if I didn't offer my services up to Mr. Chris Davis of the Baltimore Orioles. Sir, you have, well, let's be honest. You look really pathetic. You, you are now the worst baseball player in the history of baseball. I mean, come on, man. 47 at-bats. And you could not get one, one hit. I mean, just one hit. It's not that hard. Listen, I played baseball for a really long time. I've, I've umpired a lot of games. Do something to get a little bit of help because I just, I mean, you were a slugger. You were a great player at one point. I just, I mean, clearly you're, you're ready to be out of the, out of the majors. I don't know why you would want that. I mean, you're making a lot of money, but you cannot hit. So hit me up on Twitter, Chris Davis. I'll help you out. I will teach you, you know, we'll get you past this. We can get you out of this slump. I, I've been watching your form. You just need to switch your shoulders a little bit and rotate your foot faster, and you're going to have a little bit more pop on the ball. But listen, hit me up on Twitter. I'll come up to Baltimore. You know, we're still in the offseason of football right now, so I can, I've can. i got a little bit more time I can travel with. I can come up from North Georgia right up to Baltimore. I'll bring Jordo with me. We'll, uh, we'll have a great time, be able to teach you a couple things. Turn you into a great baseball player. Honestly, that's what we're going to do. We're going to fix all the problems you've had. So, uh, yeah, Chris Davis, hit me up. I'll come up and help you. Even though, you know, Baltimore is not a super enticing city, especially with my beef with Ray Lewis. You know, we can we can fix you up. We can get you get you something. Or when you come down to the to play the Braves here in a couple of weeks, we'll we'll meet up. I can come in. Just just tell everybody, hey, let, Coach Letterman's going to come in. Give me a couple of hits tips on on this batting thing so i can i can get out of this slump because that's all it is man you just this is a mental thing you got to get out of your head and get back into the game that you so love to play i tell my players that all the time quit playing with your heads and start leading with them you know just put your head into the positions they need to be and that'll fix a lot of your problems so uh yeah, just a couple thoughts on my world of sports right now. What's going on? Uh, next week, we're going to talk a little bit of uh, the draft. You know, it's coming up pretty soon. I'm pretty excited about all that. So we're going to have a little conversation about what the NFL draft is going to look like this year and the number of SEC players who I believe will be taken in the first round, which will, again, be the most of any other division because the rest of them are pretty much crap in comparison to the SEC. I'll bring some guests on. That'll pretty much be the theme of next week's. This year, March Madness really bit me in the ass pretty hard. But, you know, we got the NBA playoffs coming up. I'm uh, I'm a ride with with a couple teams in my uh, in my financial situations. Honestly, I'm going to gamble. I'm going to I'm going to bet on a couple teams that I believe can get where they need to go. And it's going to be real great. Also, congratulations to the winner of the Beefo Brackets Tournament Challenge. Go dogs 06. Please, uh, please reach out to us um, on Twitter. DM me. We'll figure out how to get you your uh, 
your book sent to you, all right? I might even autograph it for you. I, you know, just, but DM me, we'll get that book sent out to you. Congratulations on, uh, on a great bracket. Well done. You did well. So uh, we're going to pitch it over. I got a little commercial coming up for you for, uh, you know, a couple things that uh, are sponsoring us. Also, if anyone else out there would like to sponsor us on the podcast, we would love to offer that opportunity. Well, uh, we're going to have Jordo come in after it, talking about, uh, you know, ways to improve my NBA playoff gambling. We've got a special guest. We're going to try and uh, we're going to try and get in. We'll see what Jordo can manage. See you after the break. This podcast is brought to you by Two Rinnable. To rent a ball, all of the rage, none of the domestic abuse. Hello, it's me again, Dr. Sebastian, but you already know that from last week's podcast. So why you no buy to rent a ball, huh? You have a problem with me? I just want to make you best you can be. Why you want to be a little girl? And for the little girls in our audience, did you ask your parents to buy you to rent a ball? Did they say no? I hate to inform you, but your parents are afraid of how great you can become. This is the first thing you must overcome in your young life. But it's not to worry. This is what you can do. You wait till mother, father, they sleep. You go into their bedrooms, you find your mother's purse, you take out her credit card and you call this number. 7495625358 at one. This is President Directorate for the Kremlin uh, Russian Federation. They will help your child. Reach out. Ask for help. It is good world. So, uh, Jordo, welcome to the uh, welcome to the podcast for the uh, second time. This is exciting to have you back on for the second podcast in a row. Thanks for having me back, Coach. Um, you know, uh, last time we talked, we were talking about, uh, you know, what was coming up, the Elite Eights and the Sweet 16, and your team really made a run, your Auburn boys. Oh, Coach, I can't even, I can't even talk about it yet without tearing up. Just well, then cry here in the studio and tell me your feelings <laughs> about, uh, you know, how that, that last game went. Coach, it was fucking devastating. I was sitting there trying to celebrate my friend's birthday, and all of a sudden, I spilt my beer on myself. Because the guy fouled, well, they called a foul, which sent their 81% free throw shooter to the line, knocked down three clutched free throws, and then it was all over, coach. But how do you feel about the double dribble before that? Was it a double dribble? I wasn't paying attention. That makes sense. Anyways, Jordan, I just want to know, do you believe that um, they can be, be back in the Final Four next year? <sighs> Coach, that's a tough question. You know, you can't really project what's going to happen next season. This season, we hit the peak right at the right at the time that it needed to happen, and the team really came together and pulled through uh, some really tough moments. And to beat North Carolina, Kentucky, and Kansas, some blue blood schools, and just to get, mm, I don't like to use the word cheated. In the final four because there was opportunities i mean they were down by 10 with five minutes to go you know they were kind of out of it but they found the spark they were able to chip away at that lead near the end of the game and find a way to put themselves in a position to win it's just we didn't get the call coach now answering your question i don't know about next year i'm still crying over this year that makes sense you are a rather emotional person jordo it is one of my least favorite traits about you But uh, anyways, on to more personal business um, in terms of what I need in my life from you, which is really the most important thing in your life at this time, is, uh, Jordan, I've seen you with tarot cards, and you're always burning burning those bundles of marijuana and stuff. So what I would like to... I believe you're talking about my sage, coach. I'm always burning sage. Jordan, I don't know what drugs are being done nowadays, okay? In my day, it was only uppers and beefers. What's a beefer? Well, it's either bull steroids or bull semen. I never really got the full well, how story. Did but you, what, but, but how did you take it, Coach? You ingested it. So what you're saying is you ate... What I'm pink? saying is that I will win at all costs no matter what, which is why I actually brought you here today. Are we going to eat bull semen? No. I don't have any on hand. What I'm saying is that my March br- Madness bracket was busted really badly. 
Thank you, Nevada, you pieces of crap. Anyways, I need some help digging out of the hole with my bookie, or my son may have to join the Cub Scouts, and I can start rigging some, uh, you know, Pinewood Derby contests again. So why do you need me? Like I said, I've seen you with the crystals and the drugs, and the hair is pretty much a dead giveaway that you can talk with another dimension. Oh, coach, I'm flattered, baby. But I don't know about another dimension. Seriously, certainly we all do exist within the physical construct upheld by the forces of good and evil and light and dark wrapped in an ever-present battle for the soul of humanity that has been raging since the beginning of the cosmos. And I, I seem to have a pathway of understanding and ability to exist within that battle. But I don't know if I'd call it another dimension. Coach. Coach! Ah, I'm sorry, I got lost in your maze of words. I think my brain might have shut down for a second. Uh, but I think you are confirming what I was thinking, which is that you can talk to dead people. So, I need you, like an ancient gypsy woman, to summon me a ghost here into the studio right now. I think that's a stretch even for me. Um, Jordo, do you know what a Chechenian is? A person from the Czech Republic? Well, I did not pick up on that when I met several men who could possibly throw elections. I'm looking for a true basketball genius. Like, I don't know, like John Wooden or something. That's who I want, Jordo. I want you to summon me John Wooden here into the studio right now. I want to see his ghost before me. I can't make any promises, coach. But I'll tap into the ethers and see what happens. That's all I'm asking for, Jordan. I'm not, a, I'm not responsible for anything that happens to you or your family. I don't really care about my family, so that's fine. Just please watch out for me. All right. Go ahead and close your eyes, Coach. I'm not comfortable with that, but I will put on my sunglasses. Do you want to talk to John Wooden or not, Coach? Fine. Close I'm in mind. charge here right now. I don't like you like this, Jordan. This is another side of you, and I do not like it. my throat coach <clears throat> that was highly disappointing John John <laughs> who calls me from the great beyond that's a little over dramatic John um, you're just on the beef O'Brady's hotline oh, uh, uh. sorry Pat Riley really went in for that kind of thing I, I can see that. Um, anyways, it's John, flamboyant welcome. man. <laughs> this is a uh, this is now a call in show on this podcast, folks. And uh, John Wooden has I, now officially called in on what I'm going to officially label the Beefo Brady's Hotline. Are they a sponsor? Is, of um, they might as well be. They're not, but I have given them a lot of free advertisements, so they better start giving me some free Fireball drinks or some you know extra bennies in uh, in my payment package. Um, but on to more serious business, John, the NBA playoffs are coming up, and I am kind of in some trouble in s with my bookies and uh, some bets that I have made. So um, I need you to tell me who's going to win the, uh, the championship, who's going to get to the championship, how many games it's going to go to. I just need some information about the NBA playoffs. I was really a fan of that Memphis grind uh, team. The, are they still around? I thought they had a good core with Mark Gasol and um John I have to let you know uh the Grizzlies are pretty much broken up now there is one as person a, left there as an entity well no I mean there's still are the Bears team. okay 
No, John, you're in heaven, okay? You you can still look down here. I know you're probably busy playing pickup league with like Paul and Peter and all that stuff, but listen, I need you to let me know who is gonna win this game. Is it gonna be like Peter the Golden who? State Warriors? Is it gonna be Townsend? like the Is it gonna be the Golden State Warriors, Milwaukee Bucks, or Toronto Raptors? Because that's pretty much what I've broken it down to, is it's one of those three teams. Maybe the Houston Rockets, but I kinda doubt it. Because James Harden beard is just a little too long, so Chris who is Paul gonna... doesn't ever come through. See, you pay attention. So I... tell me, John. You were messing with me earlier. I'm so a tell bit me of a trickster. Who is John? I need you to be serious, okay? This is the fate of my child. How deep are you in? Hand. Your child. Yes, the fate of my son Tanner and his ability to either play Terrible football name. or join the Boy Scouts and the Cub Scouts. He sh- is should do much. both. I am against that. I am a one-thing father. John, I need you to tell me who is going to win these games. Well, I haven't conglomerated with my esoteric, you know, feelers, but Giannis is quite good. Uh, and I like they run things through the through the elbow and through the, you know they run a derivative of my high post offense, which uh, you know obviously I ten out of twelve years produced. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and all of the women that subsequently came, uh, no pun intended. So I would say the Bucks. Uh, but yeah, I'm quite a fan of Steve Kerr. You know, he we talk often. Uh, you know, he's very liberal, so he calls me. Uh, wait, they're going to be tough. Call, wait, wait, wait. I'm. I just have to stop you for a second, John. Do you believe I'm liberal? No, I. In fact, I don't believe you're anything. That's right. I am ambiguous. I am an entity in and of myself. Kind of like you were, John. Thank you. We have many similarities. Championships. Um, mostly that one. Mostly that one. John, I do want to <laughs> know, um, what kind of parking spots do you get based off of the championships that you have won? Is that kind of how things work up there? We're all teleportation-based. Um, well, that's fair. Um, John, I want to ask you a little bit about... So you're telling me the Milwaukee Bucks is the safe bet. How many games do you think they're going to win in? I would put them through to the semis. Okay, but I need to know who's going to win the championship, John, because that's... Uh, that's Who do you think you're... I'm not Jesus. John. I'm just a great analyst. Like, a great analyst. John, what I need is an answer of who is going to win. The Rockets are getting bounced early, I think, if you want to know that. Well, that's exciting because I really I do not like them. Do you think, will Golden State get to the championship? I'd have to look at a bracket, quite frankly. <sighs> John, you're not being as helpful as I thought you were going to be about my It's very time. liberating when people can't kill you anymore, I have to be honest. John, I'm just going to ask you some other questions. Yeah, do you want to know? I mean, I've got a lot of information to give you if you want. Okay, well then, uh, what do you think about basketball nowadays, John? Like, I like there's basketball. Too many rules. There's too- John, I didn't ask if you liked basketball. I'm wondering, is basketball now, do you feel like it has really lost the beginning touch? Like, back in the 60s and things, when you were coaching and in the 30s, basketball was really rough, and, you know, it was about men and strong people playing these sports. Uh, John, there are rumors that you used to use Soviet-level steroids. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How do you think you get a man over seven feet tall in 1965? That's you think I was going through the jungles hunting these giants? No, we made them. So, um, John, I also have been starting to use certain um, Soviet and Russian-level... Uh, Steroids, but I'm just wondering. I highly I, recommend Terenabol. I am an, actually a big fan. They actually sponsor this podcast. No. Yeah, so you are now also being sponsored by the thing you're talking about, which is a free ad right here. Um, everyone, please pick up some Terenabol at your local gas station today. It is the number one choice of um, athletes everywhere on how to improve your workout time without having any issues um, like soreness and recovery. And it gets you hard like nothing else. From the mouths of John Wooden. Jordan, what would you like to hear from uh, from Coach John Wooden? Thanks for joining us, Coach. Appreciate you coming through. It's always an honor to be with you, Jordo. How's the spaghetti in heaven? Oh my gosh, thank you for asking. 
Atrocious, Jordo, just atrocious. They use a chili base, I think, which is not for noodles. Uh, we got a new cafeteria lady. And quite frankly, it makes me, I've, you know, I've been struggling recently. I, I don't know if I'm in heaven or hell. And the, the chili-based spaghetti really makes me lean towards hell. It's every day now. You know, when I first got here, it was, you know, about a weekly thing. We had Taco Tuesdays, of course. Uh, and now it's just this woman is just stuck on this spaghetti recipe. I wonder if she was killed for it, quite frankly. I haven't talked to her about it. I don't want to talk to her. She has a hair lip. Um, but, uh... That's funny you should ask. You're the first one to ask. Thank you. They have hair lips in heaven? Yeah, another reason that I'm not sure that it's heaven. But I won, uh, I won so many championships. How could I not be in heaven? Well, see, now, this actually brings me to a very important question I was going to ask you, John, is um, am I coming to heaven? Well, because of all the championships? Yes, I mean, I've got rings on rings on rings. You've got on. four. I, you had five. I can win. Five. I had ten Listen. in twelve years. Listen. Not to mention my uh, daughter's team, which dominated. Uh, Listen, I'm just telling you. I can come up. I can get that many. I'm a young man, John. I have many, many championships. Ooh, not ahead as of young me. as you once were, but. Listen, John. I, I, losing John Wooden. Take the hat off, and we'll see how young you are. The line is fading. Yeah, I have to go. <laughs> John, what do you have to do? You're in heaven. It's eternity. It's not fun down here for me anymore. It's cold. Okay, one last question for you. Actually, two. Can I ask you two questions, John, and then I'll let you go? I guess. Okay, number one, am I ever going to get the Georgia job? With perseverance and a GED, you'd be surprised what you can accomplish. Uh, well, Mr. college Letterman. is a Ponzi scheme. So well, uh, I'm you don't against that go idea. to those for GEDs. <sighs> okay, well, the second question, because that was not very helpful. Get your GED wanna, is what I'm trying to say. Finish go, your education. I don't enjoy coach. tests. Okay, listen, I was not a good standardized test taker, and that is basically all the all, GED program is about. All anyway, a championship is is a test. You just look at it like that. But it's not standardized. Okay, it is a method, and it is it's a form everything. of domination. It's true, but I, I have problems reading tests. Okay, I think letters start moving. Anyways, is Nick Saban like Satan? Please tell me. Just please, please, John. If nothing else, you, I need you to tell me that Nick Saban is not going to end up in the same place that I am going to end up. Hell, I'm not going to end up there. Okay, I'm going. I'll turn my life around. I'll do it, John. I'm going to do this just to spite. I'm going to turn my whole life around just to spite you. So I'm I would come love up there that. and kick your old ass and oh. bop it, twist it, and pull it right off for of you oh. in that oh. lunch lady chili line that you are calling. And right now, I will turn my life around right after that. My work here is done. John? John, are you gone? Did we lose you? John? Well, uh, Jordan, I guess we lost the connection. Um, can, I don't really know if you can confirm that or not. Apparently, the beef of Brady's hotline does have the ability to drop. Let me use my special device to check if he's still around. Jordan, that's a socket wrench. Okay, Jordan, I just need to know, <laughs> is John Wooden here or not anymore? He's gone, Coach. Well, folks, that was um, John Wooden, one of the most successful college basketball coaches of all time. Um, he really redefined the game for generations. And, um, you know, I'm not sure I really like him very much right now. Um, he did a lot of good as a basketball coach, and I can admire championships. But as a person, I'm pretty questionable on his ability to, um, you know, dominate people, honestly. Like, maybe he's good on the court, but in life, John Wooden appears to be weak. Um, and in death. And in death, John Wooden appears to be weak. So that, that pretty much tells me John Wooden was a weak person with the luck of getting some good players on his team. He was not actually a very good coach. So uh, that's my opinion, which is law in North Georgia. So 
All you North Georgians, we now hate John Wooden. Wow, that was an experience. I've never talked to someone from beyond. Um, by the way, everyone, just letting you know, Beef O'Brady's hotline is available whenever you would like to call. And for sponsorships, uh, Beef O'Brady's, please call your own hotline so that uh, I can get a couple extra dollars to my, uh, to my normal salary. I'd love to uh, be sponsored by you. Beef O'Brady's. I'll be there Friday night. Well, folks, it's uh, nice to have you listen to the podcast. Um, you know, we're putting out more and more of these as we go. Football season's coming up. We start a baseball season. We'll talk a little Major League Baseball. Um, go Braves. Rest in peace, Mr. Cox. Um, NFL Draft coming up soon. I'm super excited. You know, lots of great SEC product coming out. Um, I will uh, be putting out a podcast here soon, talking uh, a little draft breakdown, my favorites, um, my draft board, you know, my kind of things, because Mel Kuyper is an idiot, and uh, I am not. So I'll, I'll tell you uh, how talented Greeny Williams is, and it's definitely not a second-round pick talent. Um, and several others, you know. Um, so we'll, we'll talk, through, uh, talk through that soon. I uh, might have a special... Uh, draft analysts come on with me. We'll talk about that. It'll uh, be a good time coming up next and, and soon. Um, but yeah, so, you know, try to be more like me. That's the point of all these podcasts is uh, to make you all more like me because that's what the world really needs. So, uh, folks, uh, you know, follow us on Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube. You know, uh, order my book, please. All y'all get my book. Check it out. Check out the podcast. It's going to be on iTunes, different options that you can find. Go check all those out. Uh, like, subscribe, view, all those things we need as uh, um, do that. Like, subscribe, share, all those things. Uh, retweet as much as you can. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, try to be more like me because that's what this is all about. Love and, and happiness. Uh, let's go, dogs. <laughs> Ro, 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 ro,